structure from motion. So we've seen the essential matrix. It's the matrix E that relates the image of a point in one camera to its image in the other camera, given a translation and a rotation. So we've seen the uh, equation relating P0 in image 0 to P1 in image 1 via the matrix E. And we saw that the central matrix was composed as a 3 by 3 matrix composed of the translation and the rotation between the two views where the translation is expressed as a three by three skew symmetric matrix of this form here. <clears throat> so we're gonna see how to generate or calculate E from two views. So first I'm gonna create a synthetic image to use as um, input for the rest of the lecture here. Okay, so I'm gonna run this program uh, called create points and this creates uh, two sets of points uh, points on the face of a cube and here are the um, corresponding points I guess 15 points in each image and this is the true essential matrix um, because I knew in this case that the actual translation and rotation between the two views and this is the program here <coughs> And this is the results that it generated. So the true pose from camera two to camera one, the corresponding points between images one and two, and the true essential matrix. Okay, so now let's see how to calculate the essential matrix if we're just given those two images. So we had that equation relating the two sets of points, P0 and P1. So we have one of these equations for each point correspondence. So we're going to solve for the unknowns in E. E is a 3 by 3 matrix with 9 unknowns. However, since you see that the equation equals 0, we could scale E by any amount and the result would still be 0. So E really only has uh, 8 unknowns. So that means we need a total of at least 8 equations and we can compute E from 8 or more point correspondences. So to, to do this, we're going to write um, out this equation in long form. So we have P0 as the point x0, y0, and P1 as x1, y1. Incidentally, we're always going to assume that P0 and P1 are normalized in the sense that the effective focal length is 1 and the image center is in the middle of the image. So we'll write this out, this matrix product here. and we have the equation that looks like this. So now I'm going to collect the unknowns, the E11, E12, etc., into a vector x. I'll call it x. Uh, it's a 9 by 1 vector on the right here. And my knowns will be the image coordinates here that I've collected from this equation. So that equals 0. Of course, um, I'm going to need more than one image pair. So each image correspondence will generate a row of this matrix. So I'll have at least eight rows of this matrix A. Okay, so now I want to solve the matrix equation AX equals zero. And as we've seen before, this is a system of homogeneous equations. So um, the solution is only known up to a scale uh, for X. So we're gonna find the solution that minimizes the residuals um, of that equation that we want. So it's um, we're going to get this by taking the eigenvector corresponding to the only zero eigenvalue of A transpose A and we can use SVD to find this. So the solution X is the column of V in this decomposition corresponding to the only null singular value of A. And effectively, that is the rightmost column of V because the, the um, singular values are ordered from highest to lowest. So using the eight-point linear algorithm this is called, we solve this equation AX equals zero, taking the rightmost column of V. And this is the code that does this. So given that I start with uh, two sets of points P1 and P2, um, this 
forms the matrix A um, according to that equation that we saw earlier. This takes the SVD of A and X is the rightmost column of V. So X is a vector here of our result which is in the form of a 9 by 1 vector but we want that in the form of a 3 by 3 matrix so we use MATLAB's reshape function to put it back into a 3 by 3 matrix. All right. Um, one thing people have found using this algorithm is that the results can be unstable. A little bit of image noise can cause a wild, a large error in the resulting uh, central matrix. So we can improve the results by two things. One, we can precondition the image points. So we're going to translate and scale those points so that they're centered at the origin and the average distance to the origin is square root of two. We're also going to post condition the results we're going to take the E matrix and enforce the fact that it has rank equal to. So here is how we do the preconditioning. We calculate the centroid of the first set of points P1 we subtract that off we calculate the distance to the origin and we scale by that amount. So we form a trans uh, transformation matrix called T1 which performs that um, translation and scaling of the points P1. We do the same thing for the points P2. We form another transformation matrix called T2 and apply that to points P2. So now we have scaled and translated points P1S and P2S that we can use to calculate the essential matrix. As far as post conditioning, we enforce the property that the essential matrix has only two non-zero eigenvalues and that they're equal. And we can do this by again decomposing the essential matrix using singular value decomposition. The, um, this matrix S should be a diagonal matrix with values uh, 1, 1, 0, but um, we can enforce that by replacing S with exactly that matrix and using the U and the V that we calculated from here. In MATLAB that's quite easy. You just take the SVD of E and reform E using U and V but using this uh, diagonal matrix here. We have to undo that scaling or preconditioning um, after we're done by using this equation here um, using that transformation T1 and T2 that we used earlier. So this is the complete code for calculating the essential matrix. Um, this first part just reads in the data. This reads in the corresponding image points and displays them. This is the code that calculates the essential matrix. So we first normalize the image points by multiplying by the inverse of the camera calibration matrix. This is the part that does the scaling and translation of the points. This is the part that computes the essential matrix. Here's where we do the post conditioning to enforce E to have rank two. And here is, whoops, here is where we undo the scaling um, that we did earlier. So this code, um, I can run, it's called essential.m and it produces these results. A um, essential matrix that was calculated here this is the true matrix that we uh, knew because we created the points. And these should be equal. You can see they're not, but they are equal actually if we scale, um, if we multiply a scale factor by this to get this. And then we get a result that is very close.